Okay, uh, in example one, we'll look at a uh, made up example and we'll look at the cost and the revenue, the profit, and the break even point of manufacturing and selling calculators. Okay, so let's imagine this company, Aberdeen Electronics Inc., wants to manufacture calculators. It will cost 12000 to rent a factory space per year and uh, you know to kind of set up the factory and, and let's say 20000 for machinery tools and other factory items chairs tables uh, electric wires god knows what else now i don't know the costs of assembling each calculator right will be $6 in labor because you got to pay someone to do it $3 in parts and one dollar in consumables let's say glue salt or whatever i have no idea but but something like that okay now what what will the total cost of manufacturing one thousand calculators be so that's the first thing i want you to try and calculate and um, I just want to explain this a little more clearly we have two types of costs here the cost of you know rent in the factory space the setting up cost okay and this is also called a fixed cost this twelve thousand and twenty thousand buying your machineries uh, renting your factory uh, paying for insurance all that type of thing has to be paid first of all it's kinda like a big investment right and then for each calculator there is a cost in making the calculator you gotta pay someone to put it together you gotta pay for all the cost of the actual calculator itself okay so and th this cost here with these thingamajigs is called the variable cost because it, it it changes depending on how many calculators you make like if you make more calculators it's going to cost more because you got to pay for more hours of labor and more dollars and parts and so on right so you've got a fixed cost and a variable cost but in any case what do you think the cost of uh, manufacturing a thousand calculators is Press pause and try and figure it out yourself. Okay, I'll try and help now. So we have this, you know, fixed cost of of uh, twelve thousand, right? Plus twenty thousand. So that's thirty-two thousand, isn't it? Okay. And what's the cost for each calculator? Six dollars labor and nine dollar in parts. That's uh, three dollars in parts. That's nine dollars plus a dollar in glue and whatever. That's ten, right? So for each calculator, it's ten. So if your factory just produced one calculator in the year, it would cost thirty-two thousand dollars plus ten. Thirty-two thousand and ten dollars. Does that make sense? What what would it the cost be of your factory making two calculators? It would be thirty-two thousand and twenty dollars. And making three calculators, thirty-two thousand and thirty dollars. So, how about a thousand calculators? What would the cost be? Any idea? Don't you take your ten and multiply it by a thousand, right? Because this is basically we'll just think of it as the labor cost, for example. It's, it's ten times a thousand, right? Ten thousand dollars for labor and parts. Does that make sense? Right, so you end up with okay, thirty-two thousand dollars plus ten thousand dollars, or forty-two thousand dollars overall. Right. Now, press pause and do this. What's the cost of manufacturing ten thousand calculators? Any idea? Well, it's. Uh, Thirty-two thousand to set up the factory, ten dollars in labor and parts for each calculator. For each calculator, so for ten thousand calculators, it would be like if you're just if you're just making four calculators, that would be just ten times four, forty bucks, right? In labor and parts. But if you're making ten thousand calculators, it's going to be what? Ten times ten thousand, isn't it? So, thirty-two thousand plus one hundred thousand dollars in labor and parts, right? So that gives a total cost of one hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars, right? Now, press pause and do this one. What would the total cost of manufacturing X number of calculators be? Write down the answer. 
Okay, I'll do it now. I hope you tried it. And you might notice that you got kind of this fixed cost of 32000 for the factory, right? And then for labor and parts, we have $10. Now, when it was a thousand calculators, Okay, so wouldn't this be 32,000 plus 10 times the number of calculators? Which in this case is X. Doesn't that make sense? 10 times X? Right, so if 1,000 calculators is 10 times 10. 10,000 calculators is 10 times 10,000, right? Okay, so um, what we we call the, what they're going to call this in the textbook and, and, and whatever is, is the cost equals that, okay? And um, so this is the cost. And like, we'll just write down this English sentence. 32,000, right, plus 10 times number of calculators. That makes sense, doesn't it? The cost equals 32,000 for the factory setup plus $10 for labor times the number of calculators produced, right? And in math language, in math notation, you've got this function notation, C of X equals that. And, you know, this isn't necessary. Like, in the world, we don't have to write this notation, you know. We could just use words. Instead of C of X, we could just use cost. And instead of X, we could write in a number, uh, uh, a word like number of calculators. Or if you're making guns, you could say number of guns produced. Or if you're making computers, number of computers reduced. But the the reason we use letters in algebra is just so we don't have to write the the words, okay? And um, it it simplifies it a bit. And 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 if you're working with it, you get used to it. Of course, as a student, it's 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 annoying because you have to think, oh, what does that mean, right? But th I hope you understand what it means anyway. Okay. Now, each calculator sells for thirty-five dollars. What would the revenue be if a thousand calculators were sold? Can you do that? Write down the answer. What would the revenue be of selling a thousand calculators? In other words, how much money would you bring in? And each calculator sells for thirty-five. Right? Have you got it? Isn't it just? 35 times 1,000 is the revenue, right? Or $35,000. What's the revenue of selling 10,000 calculators? Have you got it? Well, isn't it just 35 times 10,000, right? $350,000, right? So obviously, you make more money if you sell more calculators, right? And um, what would the revenue be if X calculators were sold? Have you got it? Or well, wouldn't it just be 35 times X, where X is the number of calculators? That's the revenue. You take $35, multiply it by the number of calculators, and that's it. You're done, right? So we say the revenue equals that. And I'm just, again, I'm just going to write down an English sentence. We understand that revenue, right, equals $35 times the number of calculators sold. Right? And that makes sense. And we could use that in real life, and everything would work okay. But, like, what people have... have taken to do and is instead of writing an entire word called number of calculators or it's actually a phrase they write X to represent you know number of calculators and we also did this thing called function notation where we go R of X revenue of the revenue given that you sold X calculators equals 35 times the number of calculators sold okay and, and this is all described in R of X equals 35 times X right and this, so this is the revenue function, and this is the cost function, right? Cost function, revenue function, okay? And um, next thing we're just going to look at is profit. So we've looked at cost, we've looked at revenue, now we'll look at profit. And can you answer this? What would the profit be if a thousand calculators were sold? So start there. 
Can you do that? Well, what we what what have we got to think about? We got to think about what is the cost of manufacturing 1000 calculators? And what would the revenue be? How much money would you get if you sold 1000 calculators? So we're thinking about making 1000 calculators and turning around and selling them right away. Okay? What would that combined profit be, right? Well, here's what it is. Uh, what do you think? What's the profit? So you made a thousand and then you sold a thousand. What's the profit? Write down the answer. Press pause and try it yourself. So when you try it yourself, you're exercising your brain. And exercising your brain, thinking about it, will help you understand. Even if you make a mistake, that's, you'll still learn to understand by trying. If you sit back and just wait for me to give you the answer, it will go in one ear and out the other, and you won't understand anything. And then when you're sitting down and taking a test, um, you won't understand what you're doing because you didn't think about it when we were in class. So you got to think about it and you got to try yourself. That's how you learn. That's how you learn to understand. Okay. So it's about trying. Don't have to get it right. Just take a guess. But even trying it all will help, right? So the profit, okay. Believe it or not, is there is no profit, right? Because look, it cost forty-two thousand dollars to make the silly things, and we only made thirty-five thousand to sell them. So we didn't make a profit. The answer is there is no profit. But as a, it's actually you could, it, it's actually a loss. So tell me what the loss is. What did we lose? Well, you can see, can, didn't we lose seven thousand dollars, right? And here's how the how the that works. You say profit, okay, is you take your revenue that you took in, okay. Now, thirty-five thousand dollars. You don't just get that for nothing and keep it. But you've got to subtract the cost, the labor, and and all that other uh, nonsense that goes into making it, right? Uh, because that's just the cost. Who cares about the labor and all that? Like, what you are is you're a billionaire and you just want to make more billions. Because one billion isn't enough, you need ten billion. And so, you consider labor and all that nonsense just to be a cost, okay? The, the employees of the month, they're just a cost. That's how these people think. Ha ha ha. Anyway. Funny joke. Okay. So, <laughs> anyway, you take your revenue, 35,000, right? minus and you subtract the 42,000 and that gives you your profit. Now in this case of course we get a loss. We get a negative number. 35 minus 42 negative 7,000. Okay so this is a loss. This is actually a loss of $7,000. I hope you agree. Right? Now I'd like you to calculate the profit of selling 10,000 calculators. So it's just a simple idea. Um, you you manufactured 10,000 calculators, you, later you turn around, you sold them right away. What is the um, profit of doing that? Okay. So remember, uh, I'll show you. So we, the cost of manufacturing the 10,000 calculators was calculated already. What was it? 132,000, right? What was the revenue? For selling 10,000 calculators, it was 350,000, right? So what we do is, we take the revenue, so we sell 10,000, we take our revenue, 350,000, and we subtract the cost of making those, right? Which turned out to be 132,000, right? What does that give us? So the profit, or P, profit, this time is 218 thousand dollars, right? So this time we really did make a profit. So this really is a profit this time. It's a positive number. Whereas here was a negative number, so that's actually a loss of seven thousand. A profit of negative seven thousand, let's say, a loss of seven thousand. I hope you understand that. Anyway, profit two hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. Now um, so the point is the point is um 
let's see. I guess what we do next. Do, 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 do. The next we're going to, I'm just going to skip off this point and we're just going to go to straight to break even, okay? Find the break even point. Find the break even point. What does that mean? Okay, what that means is this. And this is the key part of the, of the class. Okay, we've just figured out that if we sell a thousand calculators, we make a loss. If we make and sell a thousand, but if we make and sell ten thousand, we end up with a profit. So you would imagine that there's some number in between a thousand and ten thousand to where you break even. What does break even mean? What do you think break even means? It means like you don't make a loss and you don't make a profit. Your revenue is the same as your cost. And that's an interesting point because we want to know like over what number of calculators do we need to will we be getting a profit that's what we really want to know we, we want to know how many calculators do we need to make at least you know in order to kind of break even and then we try to get more than that so we get a profit right so the break even point is when the revenue that we take in equals the cost of producing okay and so what we actually do is we take our revenue function r of x and we set that equal to the cost function c of x right and then we solve the equation and we get a magic number and we'll, then we'll explore what that is. But watch what happens. Go back to find your functions for cost and revenue. Okay. Look at your cost function. 32,000 plus 10x. Look at your revenue function. 35x. Right. So when the revenue 35x is the same as the cost 32,000 plus 10x that's when we break even. That's when the revenue is the same as the cost. We don't make a profit at all. But it's a very interesting point because then we know how many calculators we need to make more than in order to make a profit, basically. But anyway, let's go to that. Solve this equation for x and what do you get? Now, you know how to do this, so just I'll just press pause and do it yourself, then I'll do it quickly. Okay, so I'll do it quickly now. So we subtract 10x from both sides. I hope we're okay with that. We get 25x on the left equals... 32,000, right? We divide both sides by 25 and we get what? Plug that in your calculator. Thirty-two thousand divided by 25, 1280, right? X equals 1280. Now, what does that mean? What does X represent? Whoops. What does X represent? X represents number of calculators. The number of calculators sold is 1280. And the number of calculators produced is 1280. Okay? And at that, the revenue is going to equal the cost, right? And we're going to check that. We're going to check that. Because, um, because we have to, in fact, figure out that number, like the amount of revenue and the amount of cost. And we have to give that in the answer. Okay? So the revenue is 35x. So what we're going to do is plug 35 times x, 1280, into this equation here, right? I'm just going to put it up here so you can see it, right? And that's equal to the to the cost function, 32,000 plus 10 times 1280. And both of these better be the same. If these aren't the same, we've made a mistake in, in the problem. But anyway, uh, go ahead and calculate both sides. What do you get? 35 times 1280, right? 35 times 1280. Press Enter. 44800. Zero, zero. equals and then calculate this guy 32,000 plus 10 times 1280 
Enter. 44,800. What does this number mean? This is dollars, isn't it? This is dollars. To, to sell 1,280 calculators, if you sell that many, you get $44,800 in. But to produce 1,280 calculators costs $44,800 to produce. So that is your break-even point. The break-even point, and I'll write, I'll write this down, okay, break even point is, and it's written as a point, it's, uh, you know, number of calculators, I'll write this down, and um, the uh, revenue or costs of making it, depending on of making them. So this is how you give it. You say 1,280 calculators uh, produced and sold and that revenue uh, that we get and the cost of making them is 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 44,800 and that's our break even point, okay? Um and I guess we'll give this a dollar sign just so it's clear 44,800. So that's the break even point. And and that's pretty much that because the the point is if you sell more than 1280 you make a profit right if you sell less than that you make a loss and so what we'll do now is just go back and get the profit function in other words what would the profit be if X number of calculators were sold right so can you do this one what do you think this is what would the profit be if X number of calculators were sold now profit equals revenue minus cost so what we want is you know we know that our profit I guess I'll use a different color pen profit equals revenue minus cost now the revenue for uh, selling X number of calculators is 35x. The cost of producing X number of calculators is, we've calculated up here, right? 32,000 plus 10x, right? So our profit function P of X equals that. But there's a, I've made a mistake here. What mistake have I made? The mistake I've made is I've got to subtract all of this, the entire cost, right? Got to subtract the entire cost because the profit, because you know it, it's a cost. The ten dollars in labor is a cost. That's actually a negative. So when I multiply that through. I get negative 32,000 for setting up the factory minus 10x. Okay, so the factory is a cost, the labor is a cost, we want, we don't like those. Um, but selling it for 35 bucks, hey, that's a good thing, that's a profit, right? So when we combine like terms, we get 25x minus 32,000. So here's our profit function, right? And I hope this makes sense because you sell the calculator for $35, right? Each calculator sells for $35, and it costs altogether $10 in labor and parts. So you kind of make, you think about, well, I, I kind of make a profit of $25 on each calculator sold. But then you have to sell, subtract the cost of setting up the factory, right? $32,000. So this is the profit function, right? And we can just we're just going to use that for fun. Just use that for fun to have a look at this the break even point. So here's our profit function, right? Now we said the break even point was uh, 1,280 and so on, right? So all I want you to do is think about this. Think about this. What would the profit be? Okay. What would the profit be of selling 1,280 calculators? Calculate the profit. Okay. Well, wouldn't it be 
times 1, 2, 80 minus 32,000. What does that give you? Put, plug that in your calculator. You get 32,000 minus 32,000. Zero. So that's what break even point means. It means when the profit function is zero, when your profit is nothing. In other words, your revenue equals uh, your cost, right? Where did I have that? I wrote that somewhere. Here. When your revenue equals your cost, that's when your break even point or your profit is zero. Now, my point is, like, when we sold only a thousand calculators, we made a loss. Right? So you'd think like selling less than 1280 makes you a loss. So pick a number less than 1280, let's say 1200, right? Pick a number less than 1280. And just calculate the profit of that, just for fun. Now our profit function is this, right? What's the profit in selling 1200 calculators? 25 times 1200 minus 32,000. What does that give you? Well, 25 times 1200 is giving us 30,000. And then we subtract the 32,000 for setting up the factory, and we get negative 2,000. So this is a loss, isn't it? A loss of $2,000, right? So there is no profit in making 1200 And that's the whole point about the break-even point. The break-even point tells you that you've got to make more than 1,280 calculators to make a profit. In other words, if we sold, let's say, pick a number more than 1280 just for fun, 1300 That's a little bit more. Here we'll make a little profit, right? So plug it in the profit function, calculate the answer. 25 times 1300 minus 32,000 equals 32,500 minus 32,000 gives us $500, right? So here we've made a small profit. This is basically a plus 500. We've made a small profit this time of 500, okay? Uh, because we sold more than the amount in the break even point, okay? Okay, so in this example, uh, we'll look at uh, get the total cost, the revenue function, uh, the profit or loss from selling numbers of hammocks, the break even point, and the total profit from selling X number of hammocks, okay? So, Jane has designed and is now producing a type of hammock. The fixed costs for setting up production are $25,000. The variable costs for producing each hammock are $20. And the revenue from each hammock is to be $50. In other words, she's selling them for 50 each. Find the following. The total cost of producing X hammocks. I will just start with this. So by all means press pause and see if you can do that yourself. Okay, so what I want you to do is to tell me what is the cost of producing um let's say five hammocks. Can you do that? How much does it cost to produce five hammocks? Write down the answer. And show how you got it. Don't just work it out in your head and say it. Actually write down the operations that you would use to get that answer. Okay. So the point is there are fixed costs and variable costs. And we tried to explore fixed costs in the early example, like the maybe she's uh you know got has to rent a little factory space and maybe she has special tools and, and uh and uh, uh, for making hammocks with, who knows? Okay, I have no idea. But but there's a fixed cost of twenty-five thousand dollars, maybe like like I said, fact buying a factory space, uh, machinery, or whatever, 
right? So just even just to produce five hammocks, you still have to set. You've still got your factory and whatever set up for twenty five thousand. And um, then there's variable costs for producing each hammock. In other words, labor and parts. So for each hammock, you have to buy some material and you have to pay somebody to put it together or pay yourself. Either way, but the variable co variable costs we have are twenty. And if you're just producing five hammocks, that's just twenty times five, right? So the answer is twenty-five thousand plus twenty times five is a hundred. So twenty-five thousand one hundred dollars to produce five hammocks. Okay. Now the cost of producing X hammocks is what? Press pause and write that yourself. Get the cost of producing X hammocks. Okay, I'll do it now. So the cost is your initial twenty-five thousand of setting up the factory and twenty dollars times the number of hammocks x hammocks so if it's five hammocks you took twenty times five if it's a hundred hammocks twenty times a hundred and so on right and this is our cost function c of x equals that Okay. so now press pause and do this what's the total revenue from the sale of x hammocks press pause and get the answer Okay, I'll do it now. Just so, just for fun, if what would the total revenue be from the sale of if we sold um, five hammocks? What would that be? If you sold five hammocks, and it says the revenue from each hammock is fifty dollars, so if you sold five of them, how much money would you get in? 50 times what? 50 times 5. 250 dollars, right? <coughs> so what's the revenue from selling X hammocks? Write down the answer. The revenue, R of X, is simply 50 times X, right? So we have our cost function, our cost, and our revenue function, our revenue, okay? What is the profit or loss from the production and sale of 3,000 hammocks and the production and sale of 550 hammocks? Calculate that. So if you take 3,000 hammocks, what's the cost of producing that? Okay. And what's the revenue from that, right? So we'll start with 3,000 hammocks. The cost of producing 3,000 um, well, ba -ba 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 -ba. yeah, cost of producing 3,000 is what? It's 25,000 plus 20 times 3,000, right? Which gives us what? Twenty-five thousand plus sixty thousand, right? Which is eighty-five thousand, right? What's the revenue of selling the three turning around and selling those three thousand hammocks, what would the revenue be? It would be fifty times three thousand, right? Which would be what? One hundred and fifty thousand. So what is the profit or loss from uh you know, producing and selling 3,000 hammocks. Can you do that? Well, the profit, obviously enough, equals the revenue minus the cost, doesn't it? Because you brought in 150,000 and you, 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 uh, you spent 85,000, right? So we got 150,000 minus 85,000. What does that give us? $65,000, and this is profit, right? 
This is, in fact, a profit. Now, please press pause and do this one yourself. What is the profit or loss from the production and sale of 550 hammocks? Okay, I'll do it now. So the cost of producing 550 hammocks equals what? Did you get that? It's the $25,000 for setting up the factory plus 20 bucks in labor and parts times 550 hammocks, right? So the factory cost is $25,000 and machinery and 20 times 550 gives us what? $11,000. So $11,000 in labor and parts and that's a total cost of $36,000, right? What is the revenue from selling 550 hammocks? Calculate that. So you use the revenue function, right? It is 50 times 550, which is Fifty times five fifty twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars. What is the profit or loss or the profit let's say from producing five hundred and fifty hammocks and then turning around and selling them? Well always profit equals how much money you took in, subtract the amount of money you spent in making it, right? So the money taken in 27,500 subtract the cost 36,000 do we have a profit or a loss so of course the profit equals a negative number negative 8,500 so we made a profit of negative 8,500 in other words our loss we made a loss of eight thousand five hundred dollars right that time okay so let's have a look at what is the break-even point so we've just seen just for fun we've seen that look if you sell 550 you're gonna make a loss if you sell 3,000 you're gonna make a profit but what is that kind of magic number of hammocks that you make where you don't make a profit or a loss. You make a zero profit. In other words, your revenue and your costs are balanced. What is that break-even point? The break-even point is when the revenue, that the money you take in, equals the cost of production. Right? Revenue equals cost. In other words, your revenue function equals your cost function. Okay? What's the revenue function? A revenue is just 50 times x, right? And that's equal to the cost. C of x, which is 25,000 plus 20x. And solve that equation for x. Press pause and, and give yourself more time if needed. Okay, I'll do it now. So we subtract 20x from both sides and we get 30x equals 25,000 and we divide by 30 on both sides and x equals 833.333 right? what does x represent? number of hammocks so the answer is 833 and one-third hammocks or 0.33 okay so um, that doesn't make any sense because you can't have a third of a hammock how do you have a third of a hammock right here's a hammock how do you have just one-third of a hammock you know I mean that's nonsense right so We'll call the break-even point, and it doesn't really matter. We'll call it, uh, we'll just round it. We'll just round it to 833. 
So at about 833 hammocks, you're at break even. The revenue equals the cost. And I don't care actually if you call it 834 because that would give you a tiny little profit. So, but let's just make it simple. We'll just, if you happen to be in this situation, just round the number to a whole number because you're talking about number of hammocks. You got to round it to a whole number, okay? Now, can you do this? Oh, 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 oh we're not done yet. We're not done yet. What is the revenue from making 833 hammocks? What is the cost of making 833 hammocks? We've got to do that. So in other words, we've got to check our answer in the equation. Right? So we plug this into revenue and we plug it into cost. So go ahead and do that. 50 times 833 gives what? Four one six five zero, and cost twenty five thousand plus twenty times eight three three uh, four one six sixty. Okay. So um, of course these are a little different. I mean, 833, our revenue is a little less than the cost, okay? But, but I mean, they're, practi they're practically the same, practically the same. So the break-even point is you take your number of items, in this case hammocks, and then you take your revenue or cost and you just kind of put it as an ordered pair. So number of hammocks, 833, Revenue or cost, use either one of these, it doesn't matter. But I'll just say 41,650 about, right? Or 60, it doesn't matter. Something close to that is fine, okay? So that's the break even point. And of course, you could have used 834 if you wanted to, that's also fine. And, and then whatever this is. But but in the, in the ballpark, yeah, because it's a kind of a funny one when you get, you know, one third of a hammock, That that's a little funny, right? Now, can you do this? The total profit from the production and sale of X hammocks. What does that give us? Well, profit equals what? Revenue minus cost, right? What's the revenue of X hammocks? 50x, right? Minus what's the cost of x hammocks? This, 25,000 plus 20x. What mistake did I make here? The cost is, all of this is a cost. It's all negative, okay? The factory is a negative, the labor is a negative. We have to subtract all of this, the entire cost, so we need parentheses around this. And then you multiply in by a negative one because the factory is a negative 25,000 and the labor is a negative 20x, right? Uh, but the revenue is great, that's a, that's a plus. But, but the factory and the, the, the uh, you want to get the cheapest, dirtiest, most rundown factory you can find in the, in the world and you want to get the most desperate poor people in the world because you want your factory costs as low as possible you want your labor costs as low as possible and you want your price to be as high as possible to make as much profit as you can and to turn your billion dollars into 10 billion and to turn your 10 billion into a trillion and to control the world right good luck so that's what it's all about isn't it just joking so 50, if we combine like terms, right, 50x minus 20x, again, this, this is the labor over here. You want to subtract, that's a negative here. That's a cost, right? 50 minus 20, that's 30x, okay? Minus 25,000. And this is our profit function, okay? And just for fun, we'll plug in a couple of values just, just to check if this profit function works, right? So we could have used the profit function in with the 550 hammocks for example 
what would profit of 550 be? Uh, go ahead and calculate that. Well, it'll be 30 times 550 minus 25,000, right? Which gives you 16,500 minus 25,000, which is what? Negative 8,500. So the profit from making 550 hammocks is a negative 8,500, right? And of course you can get the profit for all sorts of things with this. Just for fun, what would the profit of um, making 834 hammocks be? Get the answer. So that would be 30 times 834 minus 25,000, right? Which is what? You should work that out to be $25,020 minus 25000 giving us a slight profit of 20 bucks. Okay, that's after labor and everything is paid for. Slight profit of $20, right? And um, let's see where we're at. So just to compare that to the break-even point, the break-even point we decide, okay, uh, you know, about 833 and a third is break-even points, about 833, and if we make a little bit more than that, we make a slight profit, and there's a slight profit of $20, okay?